Welcome back to the Crooked Spine Show. Most people have had back pain in their life and sometimes it becomes chronic or long term where they really want to know what's going on. As a chiropractor, I want to educate my patients on what's causing their back pain first before we even start treatment. In this workshop, we talk about exactly what causes of back pain there could be. Maybe you're sitting, your posture, uh, previous trauma, scar tissue, accidents for one, two. Then how do we fix this? How do we treat this? Yes, we will adjust the spine, but the most part for us is going to be outside of the office. How do we stretch? How do we strengthen? When is it appropriate? And for how long, how often? In this workshop, we talk about one, two, three, four exercises, how to stretch the lower back, two, two posture checks of standing and sitting, along with one, two, three um, exercise, how to strengthen your back also. Obviously, there's a lot more, but these are the most common ones I give my patients to start their routine that they can build out from there, especially if they work out already. So our job is to make sure, again, how do we get things healthy, especially someone's back, and then help them maintain that through first flexibility when their back is the pain is less intense than from stretching and then from there to strengthening. So to talk to my friends again, the show notes has links to this video of the podcast along with the previous podcast and along the exercises too. So enjoy talk to my friends, enjoy the week, and we'll see you next week. Before we start, any other questions? Nothing yet? Let's go right to it. Okay. My specialty, one of my specialties, me and my partner in chiropractic in general our lower back. We treat the spine as a chiropractor from the neck down to the low back, mid back, even hips, ankles, knees, everything else too. What we want to focus on with low back pain to start is really where does it come from? Do you want to grab a seat over here? Okay, it's like right there. And I'll grab the sign sheet for you too. If not, they want to know who is here today. They can track you down. Knock on your doorbell at night. Alright. There's one over here too, sir, if you want to sit over here. I'll move my stuff. Okay. Here's the here's the pencil also. So if you should have a workshop of outline. A couple more over here if you want one. The next one. Alright. You know, we we have a plethora of papers that you can always take a share of them. Okay. So to start with as a chiropractor, we treat back pain, neck pain, low back pain, mid back pain. Take x-rays in our office. We see a lot of chronic injuries that people have for a long, long time. Okay. A lot of it can be stress related, lifestyle related, how much you drive, how much you sit, previous car accidents, previous trauma. The last couple years, as you've known, people have sat more, been at home more. So a lot of that sitting, even working from home too, has people done this a lot. You gotta get the body back here. Okay. I want to focus on a couple of things today is causes of back pain. At that point, by having the cause down, what we focus on, allows you to understand where it's coming from, how to fix it. We send our patients videos, how to stretch, how to strengthen, how to move, how to check your posture, how to do things like that. I'm gonna give you my top four or five of, of how to stretch, how to strengthen, so you understand what, how to get your body healthy, okay? I can't go to your house every day. My wife would be upset. I'd have to go home sometimes. <coughs> I want to make sure you understand these talks are allowing you to, get to learn things to get your cells looser, stronger. If we're looser and stronger, we have less pain. We can handle our quality of life to be better. We can move better. We can enjoy what we want to enjoy. Okay. So to start, the very top ones here, in the show notes you have too if you're watching it live at home, whatever, is, is what are the causes of back pain? Put down traumatic. Traumatic, well, we see a lot of car accident cases, a lot of fall, a lot of injuries like that. We don't take work comp, but car accident cases, what happens is, you hurt initially, right? You, next day, maybe not the same day from a small accident, next day wake up, my neck hurts, my back hurts, a little bit here and there. That can happen when the ligaments in your spine that control bone to bone connection, they overstretch. When they overstretch, they cause some soreness of pain. Once you stretch too far, they can actually tear the area, causing scar tissue inflammation. One is make sure you break that down quickly, get that out of there, because if it sits there long enough, it goes from what's called acute or short term to chronic or long term. So when they have an accident, now so all of a sudden they go, in a week they go, man, I feel great, I'm not a problem, I don't see a doctor, let's get x-rays done, I'll be fine. They wake up three weeks, three weeks, four weeks later, they go, my neck hurts now, my back hurts now. Things have now learned to heal, to tighten up, instead of healing loose and strong. If you ever strain the muscle, <coughs> you don't stretch it out, for example, your bicep, 
You don't stretch it out, you go, it gets tighter, 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 tighter. We have to make sure we stretch everything out. Our job as chiropractors is to make sure we stretch from the inside out, the spine, the spine doesn't tighten up. The spine tightens up, what happens is that can cause pressure on the nerve on the disc and cause things to now feel not just neck pain or back pain, sometimes leg numbness, leg weakness, leg tingling, leg burning. We want to get that out of there also. Okay? So as our job is to be how to make things looser <coughs> and stronger over time to get back to normal quality of life. So the next one here is going to be physical work. Okay? Where is, where, has anyone ever done physical labor before? <laughs> Anybody? Mm -hmm. It's, you get sore. Okay? That can be last a day, maybe two days, three days. When it's your job every day, your occupation, I see a lot of construction works in my office too. If they can get sore, we can they recover. And they do that for 10, 15, 20 years, what happens? They develop scar tissue in the area. Things get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. Scar tissue is like glue in the area. If a joint doesn't move long enough, that scar tissue can cause calcification ligament causing arthritis. So our job is to make sure we diagnose that off and that's if we need to, to get it in our office. But when you have that overall, prevent that cause by moving our joints more and more, maintaining our flexibility. Okay, so if you have the type of work and you're in construction or have laborers type of jobs, how do we stretch more, get them to come down and then go get checked if need be, so that our inflation doesn't become scar tissue, and scar tissue causing arthritis is more permanent. Arthritis is calcification of a ligament or bone, even muscle, that can make things not want to move properly permanently. Once you have it, Unless you want to get in there and chisel it out, it's permanent. Sometimes you can have it, not cause symptoms at all. Once it does cause symptoms, like late stage cancer per se, at that point, okay, now that's a problem. Now you might be outside a chiropractic realm or your own health in physical therapy, and now need surgery. Catch it early enough without causing scar tissue, we talked about a little bit more of the causes too, to allow your body to heal. So when you have something going on with your body, especially back pain, long term, prolonged, chronic back pain, Get checked out, people. Allows you to get an examination and direct x-ray is done from or where you go. Allows you to make sure there's nothing permanent in there you're not seeing or not feeling without an x-ray or without a forward scan. Okay, questions yet? Well, not entertaining yet, but it will get entertaining, trust me. Okay, now posture. So, i use this chair over here. Here. Who has great posture? I like all the, all the, yes, no one jumps up, okay? So posture is two things for me, standing and sitting, okay? Posture, when someone's, the last couple of years, especially with the pandemic, this being uh, July of 2022, last couple of years, people have done this all day long. If you're in school watching your teacher on Zoom trying to entertain you without falling asleep, if you're at work, same thing. Your boss or coworker, same thing, doing that, and same process. So we have to make sure our body is sitting properly, and we'll go over this more in detail how to do it, we clean our body away from this. Once we do this where our body leans forward, now all the pressure sits here in your lower back versus going through your legs, through your body, so you can get through to the floor. We have to keep our back strong. Even when we sit, we have to keep our back strong. We can do that. If it stays strong, what happens? It doesn't get weak. It doesn't get tight. But it takes work and the right idea of how to reset or or re you check your posture daily, sitting or standing. This is sitting posture. Now, standing posture, I people do, it's kind of hard because little little piece right there. You go against the wall and have them go against with their feet, their hips, their heels, heels, hips, shoulders, and head, and stand there. And someone this morning did this. She felt like she was leaning back too far. Why do you think that is? Hi. Is that her body has learned this posture here. This is her normal posture. This is her in her head. This is what she feels as her normal, her straight. When she this, she goes, whoa, that feels way too far back. When we're here efficiently standing up against the wall, for example, because these walls and up are, are really made well, okay, straight and architecturally approved by my father-in-law, he's an architect. Okay? So at that point, the goal is can we stand up straight and over time put a weight in her heels we're here versus where we feel comfortable here. Okay, I'm gonna close that door real quick. It's kind of loud Thank for you. me. I don't wanna, I don't wanna drown that out too. I'll put a little bit of a book here too. 
so no one wants to sneak in. Oh, there you go. There's my sneaker in there. You might really burn. All right, I take something for her granddaughter, so she had to get her stuff in. So we want to make sure, we talk about posture, it's not where you are, are you ideal? Because ideal is engineering based, more efficient. We don't wear down as quickly. We don't feel exhausted all day long. If we get there, we'll go over how we do that. Again, city checklist, the same checklist in a minute again. We want to make sure we look at that and go, okay, am, I, am I good or am I where I feel good but not where good should be? Okay? So next part here. Talked about a second ago, scar tissue and arthritis. Talked about that already. Muscle versus nerve pain. Okay? As a chiropractor, the last, the last cause here, the last cause of back pain, I always go, okay, do you have nerve pain or muscle pain? People go, I don't know. I'm going to go, well, that's my job. That's what I do. So I want to see muscle pain is going to be achy, sore, again, painful, and maybe even swollen or tender. Nerve pain is going to be usually three things burning, tingling, numbness, maybe sharp pain. So again, nerve pain is going to be burning, tingling, numbness, maybe sharp pain with movement. Okay, sometimes, or when someone's sleeping, they wake up. And my, one of my questions to patients is a nerve pain or, or, or a muscle pain. I ask, do you have pain when you're not moving, when you're sleeping or sitting down? They go, yes, that's more nerve pain. Muscle requires movement to cause pain. That make sense? Or it can be, made, and then, again, exception is if it's swollen, if it's tender, but movement will usually cause muscle pain. Non-movement would be more nerve pain. Again, more with numbness, tingling, burn. Any questions about that? Anything? Nothing? I'm waiting for how to fix it. Good. Even weakness, too. Weakness can be two things. Okay, it can be severe muscle pain and or severe nerve pain to where nerve, nerve house shut down, muscles actually atrophy. Okay, so we're going to go right now. The last part we're getting to the exercise for one, too, is, is how does it affect you? Okay, when I talk to patients, this is more from a patient perspective. If someone's having pain, I go, okay, is it chronic pain, long term pain? How does it affect your lifestyle? Does it affect your sleep? Will you get out of bed? Go to move around the house? Go to pick things up? I have a lady, she's packing up to move. Okay, she'll do so many boxes a day because her back hurts. We increase that over time, move better, to make her back strong so she can do what she wants her quality of life. Next one, too, starting with exercise program. You always want to start something, before you start an exercise, maybe stretching or strengthening, are you good enough to start? Okay, some people, if they're a level 10 out of 10 pain, I go, you're not going to do anything until you at least a 5. A 5 where things are tight, I can still move without sharp pain or weakness for one. So I want a pain level to be at a certain level before we start exercise or stretching so you actually feel it can be effective. If I start moving, but it's a 10, I'm going to move in pain and anguish. I don't like to cause people pain. I'm going to get sued again or something. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding about getting sued again. No, I haven't, I haven't sued yet. I've been back 20 years. Weird. I, why do I have insurance, right? If I lose insurance, I might get sued the next day. Insur all insurances are phenomenal. I love them sarcastically. Okay. Also, too, knowing the source of your pain. If I have, I had a lady come in a couple years ago, she had knee pain, <coughs> car accident. Knee wasn't hurt. The pain was from her back down to her knee. Crazy, right? Magic. No. Pinched nerve the lower back down to the knee. Okay. Back pain radiating to the groin, right down the hip, down to the foot, even the toe. I want to find out the source of your problem first. At least you can know the source of the problem before you start doing anything at all. Because exercise can either help or hurt you. So the right ones are good, but if you want to go Google, you can check them out all day long, and also hurt yourself. Google's your friend sometimes. Use some maps, I guess. Me. Okay? So, to start, okay, we're going to start again. I'll go over again. Standing posture, again, heels, hips, shoulders, and head against the wall. Move home for 30 seconds. Hold that and try to walk. Let's do the next size, that one, too. Walking this way in your heels, number one, is going to be your feet. Because we walk every day, right? Let's go somewhere. Okay? If I'm going to walk in my heels, I'm going to walk back here. Or if I'm going to use a cane or a walker, I may have to adjust those. Do you mind if I use your walker in a second? Okay? So if I'm going to use a walker, they bring it into the next one. Appreciate it. Okay? I'm going to use a walker. I'm going to make sure 
I'm back here on the walker, not here on the walker. I wait on my heels, back here on my heels, doing this, here, not here. This is more for position, more for movement, yes, to support me, but not to make my body want to load every day. If I'm doing this every day, my back is now tilting this way, getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Okay, any questions about that? Same thing, if I'm using a cane, same thing. I want the cane out in front of me here, supporting me, yes, assisting me, but not. I'm not putting my weight on that walker or that cane or a walker. Any questions about that? And I want mine, this is actually a good height for me, here, same thing, is here, not bent over. I've had people have come with canes that are, that are way down here. I'm like, this is for a mission or something. I don't know. We want it way up here. We want it here, not down where you have to bend over. Okay, any questions? About yes. Yeah, I've seen some walkers that are, uh, and camels are taller. Mm -hmm. To me, that seems a little bit wiser because now you're not so hunched. But, but I just see that those don't extend back. Exactly. These, and this is for me, actually, I'm okay with this. So I'm going to be here. I'm going to use it out here this way. But some people you have mentioned, they can even be higher too, where it makes you stand up straighter even better. Yeah, they almost come up here too. Those are, they listen to my talks. So I don't know how they found me. <laughs> but they, they heard me. Because when we're here, I used to talk all the time. People come in walkers or cane, you like this. So you want to make sure we're at least here, the weight on your heels. You can walk with your heels, you know your back will be smart. I've seen some of those even higher than this kid. Yeah. Those are good. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. Perfect. Perfect. Good. Good. And then next one. Now we go to sitting posture. Okay, we're going to talk about this yet. How do we sit to help our back stay strong and a better posture too? Okay. I have a couple steps I have people do. Sit the first third of the chair, first third. Okay. And I have people do is bring their knees below their hips. So their feet are underneath them, underneath. That's your body is having to sit on more of the hip joints, not your tailbone. Once I do this and come back this way, now my weight is center of gravity is on my hips, here between my shoulders and my hips. My spine's here, not having to push my grab center of gravity out here this way. Questions about that? So again, from the side view here, here, I'm going to bring my hips on the first third of the chair. Knees below my hips, and so my body is now resting here. My back is active along with my core to hold me from falling backwards. I almost want to lean back a little bit so my muscles feel like I'm on a little bit of a teeter totter going back here so muscles stay active the whole time, not relaxed and overstretched. Like we were a second ago, leaning forward versus leaning backwards. When the body's an extension, okay, rule of thumb, body's an extension when you're used to. The bones move. The bones move like a, like a moving joint. The muscles stay strong. Body goes with too much flexion. The bones stick and don't move. The muscles shorten. So now it forces this posture to stay this way. So you want to go back. Yes? There's not the tension on the knees. I feel it. Good. So for yours, go on the outside, maybe the chair. See so that feels easier. Good. OK, but good. When you're feeling it, good, because you're causing the stretch. I know. Uh huh. <laughs> and you may even feel the hips too. But we're, if I, and again, this goes back to what we're talking about the pain levels too. You want to feel uncomfortable to cause a change. You've got to be uncomfortable to cause a change. If you cause a change, then our body can actually adjust over time because it feels a good stress. Questions about that? Stress can be good if it's not, doesn't make you want to guard. If I'm doing this and my back really hurts doing this, it's staying guarded and tight. Let's keep it loose, but also uncomfortable, so the body can reset itself over time. Same thing with the standing, too. If I stand, and I go here, where I stand, and my body feels, man, I feel uncomfortable standing this way. I'm like, fantastic, but I want to see. I want you to feel uncomfortable to cause a change. Your brain, your cerebellum, resets everything back to your one. Any questions about that? Good stuff? All right, yes. You say once you straighten up, once you attain that posture you're looking for, your brain will actually pick it up as that's the way it's doing. It'll reset itself. 
the cerebellum reset your center of gravity. So it's sitting and standing. So at that point, over a three or four week period, your body will go, I don't want to do this anymore. It feels uncomfortable. That this sitting here feels uncomfortable versus sitting upright. Takes time. Yes, ma'am. What about the muscles that are already tightened and move it over? So we're going to add some stretches in there. You're rereading it. You're part of the program, I got it. We're re now we're going to go through the stretches and strengthening to maybe get looser, to now to reset everything. Good question, though. If my muscles are like this, and I've stood here for a long time like this, my muscles in my hips are going to be tight and short. The muscles in my lower back can be weak and overstretched. So I have to reset everything back here to lengthen my hip flexors. My lower back now to overstretch. If that the resets can be uncomfortable. Comfortable to get better. But yeah, we just have to reset stuff. We can reset things. At that point, our body can feel uncomfortable to get better over time. But knowing what to look for is going to be the key too. Again, want to avoid anything that causes sharp pain. Anything that causes your muscles to guard and stay tight. Just sit over here. Want to sit over here? Go ahead. Great side view. Okay. So the first we're going to do. Low back rolls. This is complicated, so make sure you pay attention to this one here. Just down, just down here. Quick commercial break. Here we go. Okay. This one you can do either. I like the floor for this one because this one, the floor will, will kind of have less give. You want some support. Okay. Some people use a bath towel rolled up. Some people use like a foam roller if you want to use that too, but you want something, something soft to start. So I have people do either bath towel, okay, roll it like, like this, very professional, here, half, here, then there, roll, you guys got, I don't, it doesn't matter how you roll it, doesn't matter, okay, okay. So here, roll the bath towel, I want to make my back, instead of doing this, my back open and stretched out. Okay, if I use this as an arch, for example, here for one, two, it can allow my back now to open itself up and decompress everything. Okay, so simple back towel. You can't start the bed if you want to. There's no rule, rule. Okay, take that back towel, put it on your lower back, and then, make sure you pay attention to this one, here, and lean over it. And sit here and ponder life for like a minute. One minute. I like a minute for the stretch because the minute allows your body now to open itself up. But if it's enough time to stretch, things will move better. <clears throat> After you've done a minute, then you want to do to go from being legs bent to now legs flat. Okay? It will cause more of a stretch in the hips, make the back arch a little bit more, so maybe a little uncomfortable. Again, I like uncomfortable, but I don't want to be painful. So some people just start just like this. Even 30 seconds. Feels okay, go to a full minute. And then after that full minute, then go down to your legs straight for 30 seconds. Feels good. <coughs> then switch back and forth just one time. Legs bent, one minute. And legs straight for one minute. Okay. Any questions about that? Yes? I venture to say not one of us in this room can get down there on the floor and get back Good. up. Good, <laughs> so use your bed. Use your bed then. If the bed, if it feels too soft in the bed, yeah. use two bath towels. Okay. Genius, two bath towels. <laughs> but it allows you to get that slow stretch again. Enough stretching, but not painful. Not where it guard and tightens on you. It does. You have to back it off a little bit. All right. Some people will come and go. Yeah, I tried that with a with a, one of those hard foam rollers. I'm like, yeah, that's gonna be way too much. Yeah. Gotta take it easy with that. One. Okay. Next one is. The blah blah supine. Oh, good, good. So this one here. Here now I'm gonna do. Let me put this forward. Easy to see for this one. Here. Now what we're gonna do is take. Let me see this just for my head. Is take here. One leg bent. Other leg over top. It bends fine too. Now bring that knee, that top knee, over as far as you're comfortable. Get that back to stretch with the hip. And wherever that is, maybe all the way down here if you want, if that's comfortable, not just here, where you make that little bit of face 
That's going to be uncomfortable. Hold that for about 30 seconds, and then switch sides. Here, this is, my, this is stretching my right hip, right lower back with my right leg over my left leg. You want the foot to kind of stay on the ground as much as possible. You don't bend your ankle. Keep that ankle or that foot as straight as possible on the floor. Then come over, tilt a little bit, come on over. And then for the left side, one now is bend your right knee, right foot on the floor stationary, and then bring that right left leg over and come across. Again, this is a hold up just for about 30 seconds. Okay, this is the outside hip stretch. Okay. Any questions about that? Is that just one side? Yes. One side? Oh, I would do both sides. Both sides, 30 yeah, seconds. Both sides, just do it once. Just once. I like everything once, for one, because you really feel it. If you want to do it long, you can do it longer, but not more than a minute to start. Okay? Some people do this, have the bottom leg straight, and the leg come over top and, and come this way. It gets the hip, but not all the lower back. <coughs> have the leg, lower leg bent first, we really stretch out the lower back as much as the hip with that full stretch across the body. Good. Any questions about that? Okay. Next one. All right. This is going to be... Okay. This is an easy one. You can do it in your own chair if you want. You. Here. Okay. So everyone, if you can, try this one. What you want to do now is a figure four stretch. Bring your right ankle over your left knee, okay? Now, bring that right knee to your left shoulder. <laughs> as much as you can, this is not a circus, or ballet. What you wanna do also is keep your body straight as much as possible, and hold that position over top as a modified stretch versus the floor, and just hold that for 30 seconds. Again, only once, once you're done with that side, just call 30 seconds now. Speed it up. And now switch sides. And now we're all going to have a tighter side. It's called being human. Okay? And we go here. And then bring that now with the right ankle or the left ankle on the right knee. Now bring your left knee to your right shoulder. And hold that position for about again, 30 seconds. All right. Any questions at all? Simple, easy. <laughs> oh, great, great. Okay, 30 seconds over. Take a break, take a break. Okay. But, that, but that, that gives you a chance to now build a routine again, how to stretch your back. Those are simple, simple ones. I have another four or five I use for my patients too. These are the ones you can start doing on your own to do them. Once you do them, I'm a morning person for stretching. Okay, I stretch before I work out. This is my workout time. So I stretch before I go work out. That's my thing. That's what I like to do. Everyone's different though. Like the afternoon, whatever you want to do. If someone's having soreness, tightness, or pain, I can do it in the morning because when we're sleeping, we tighten up naturally because we're not moving as much. So you want to make sure when, we're, when we wake up in the morning, we do that quick stretch. And when I say quick, for me it's routine, so that's my quick, I boom, get a cup of coffee, go, go to the gym, work out. But I, but I recommend someone's in pain or, or, or soreness it is going to be morning, maybe around lunchtime, and then before you go to bed. That's going to be my routine for someone just starting here with me, allow them to get into a routine of doing it three times a day. They may only do it twice, but they're building a routine over time so their brain becomes from conscious to unconscious as a daily routine. So they're not worrying about, am I paying to a stretch? I'm doing it because I, I'm going to be consistent so my pain goes away. Some people stretch when? When they're in pain. When they strengthen? Because they're in pain. Do them every day so you don't have to worry about if you're sore or not. So you keep that pain level away and keep your body strong. Okay? Any questions yet? Nothing yet? Okay. Next three, wall kickback. Ooh, this is a tough one. All right. Here, we'll do two ways. Use a wall, okay, here. I have people for a balance, put their forearms on the wall. And then from here, keeping your, I'm going to use my right leg first, keeping your left leg straight and relaxed, but grounded on that side. Bring that, just the foot up, off the ground. That's it. Okay? Simple? Okay? Then from there, if that's comfortable, say for 10 seconds, so now bring your foot off the ground, 
to get that activate the glutes, the hamstring, and the back at the same time. That's comfortable, then straighten out your leg even more to make that really fire the glutes and help the back and that hamstrings tighten up. Okay, and quite again, we'll do the left side this time. Left here, bring that foot up. Make sure that right side is ground, it's not gonna pop out on you. Get that right hip in, left foot goes on, on your toe, hold for a second, bring that foot off the ground. Then after you've done that for about 10 seconds, then bring that leg out if you can to a full stretch for about another 10 seconds. Okay, so to start, again, left side, right side grounded, on your left toe, hold for about 10 seconds, then come off the ground, 10 seconds, and straight out your leg, 10 seconds. Okay, you can do this on the wall or if you're comfortable, even on a chair. So here, I'm gonna go, let me do it this way, so you can see it easier. Here is toe on the ground, 10 seconds, leg up, 10 seconds, and leg straight for 10 seconds. My left side stays and doesn't want to pop out. All right. Who wants to try this? Any takers? Huh? Huh? Come on. Come on over. I want to check too. What is your tighter or what is your stronger versus weaker side to dust? But that's me. I want to see. Think. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. You want to do the chair? You want to do the wall? Perfect, see the wall? Cool. All right. Right there. Mm -hmm. So forearms up here, just like that. Mm -hmm. Now keep that, which, which leg do you want to do first? Right. Good, so make sure that left tip is stationary, right there, doesn't move. Now bring that right toe up, on the ground right there, good. One, two, three, from the speed speed top, or speed of timing. Your profile's coming out then, and now bring that foot up, a little higher. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now bring that leg straight. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half. <laughs> ten. <laughs> Good. Okay. Switch sides. Ooh. Where, where do you feel it? Where do you feel sore? I feel this leg mm -hmm. right here. Good. So when you're doing this stretch, realize this leg, this left leg, is still working. It's isometric, but it's still holding you. So your body's going to hit out, right? Good. Now switch sides. Let's go that one side there. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Put up. Right here, right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then one, one and a half, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We said felt weaker, stronger. Oh, this one's stronger. All right. So stronger this side. And stronger meaning stronger in the back, the hip, or the leg. It doesn't hurt as much. Perfect. So it's going to be, we have to make this side stronger. So it doesn't have more often. Exactly. Because it's tighter than it's weaker. Oh. When the muscle gets tight, it gets weak. Okay. So that's one plan. Thank you. That's good. I appreciate it. Welcome, everybody. Work, work. Next one. Okay. Wall the chair squat. Okay, I'm going to go here. I'll demonstrate just on the wall here and make it easy. I won't go on that because this whole little uh, chalk little thing work. Here, I'm going to come on the wall. If I was on the wall, I would slide down. Okay? I want to make sure when I'm sliding down, my shoulder touching the wall along my head so my body is staying straight the whole time. Here, not bending forward. That's the plan. We want to work on posture, right? We want to work on posture with movement to reinforce that posture. Talk about the last one in a second, too. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to come here. I'm going to slide all the way down the wall, hold for a second, and come all the way back up. When I say come all the way down, I still want my hips above my knees, so I'm coming down, holding on the wall, and coming back up. Okay? I'm not going to do this. Ugh, I'm not going to pop my butt out, because that's cheating. It's not a good posture. Fail. Okay? Yes? That's a little bit dangerous for people with not, um, poor balance. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use a chair. Good. See, again, plant the people in the audience so it helps my talk. Thank you very much. So here, I'm going to go next from a wall by a bad balance, or not bad balance, poor balance, hasn't been trained yet. Use a chair. I'm going to come down, 
hold that position, and come straight up. Where are my eyes on this? Straight out. Mm -hmm. Eyes are straight out. Okay. I want it. Why do I have my eyes straight out? Why is that? You want to train your balance, mm -hmm. okay? And if you're off a little bit, good. You have a chair; it's not going to move. If you use a chair with rollers, well, that's your fault. <laughs> Get up with that, okay? But I want to make sure that chair is stationary. I'm not moving my head straight. I'm going to put my feet about shoulder width apart and toes straight. Okay? I see a lot of people with their toes are coming out to one side or the other side. When you do that, it makes your back tighter. We can get stronger this way and reset our body this way. Our back stays loose and strong. Okay, I'll do that with that same lot for work. They do a lot of this because it feels good sometimes. We want to make sure our bodies look like this, exactly. Okay? So here on the chair, yes? Can we start that just going a little bit down? Yeah, of course. And then eventually, will it build? Mm -hmm. You can always modify it. Yeah. Wherever, wherever, you're, wherever you start to feel uncomfortable, how's that? Wherever you start to feel uncomfortable, go there. If I'm here and I'm comfortable, just come down here, hold for a second, come back up. Build that confidence up, build that leg muscle up so you feel good. Again, find people in the audience, I'll pay you later. Okay? But can we get there where we feel this feels good? I'm here, my head straight, hold and come straight up, not here. Okay? We gotta focus on back strength, and when I say back strength, I say lower body. Quads, quads, hips, lower back, and hamstrings. By coming straight down allows your body to really feel everything fire back here versus here, it's just the hips. You're just shifting your hips all you're doing. You're cheating. Cheaters never prosper. They say so hard. We want to come down. Once you've done enough, we feel comfortable, say, five times with your eyes open, and do the eyes closed. Crazy, right? Crazy. Oh, it's, you're, now you're training your body to know where you know where you are. Not you're not using your right, not your vision as much. So we want to make sure our body now is here. We're stationary. Eyes closed. Come straight down. Fold for a second and come straight up. Again, wherever you're comfortable. Okay. But having eyes closed and open allows you now to really feel what's firing. You're not overstimulating yourself. Okay. Here for a second. I'm going to come back. Any questions about that? Yes? Does it matter the foot width? Should it be shoulder width? I'm okay. As long as your feet feel good to you, because some people want them in, some people want them out, it's more for me if, if you're comfortable here first with your feet wider, then go for it. But if I'm going to stand in normal, say, life, where, where do you feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. Closer. Closer. So I'm going to be here. And you're closer, as you get closer, it will get harder. Mm -hmm. But if this is your normal how you stand, and how you pick things up, how you how you pick things off a counter, for example, you want to do your normal type of environment, your normal life, per se. So I don't put more of the feet, more your body is leaning into or leaning out. Okay. Last one is walking this way. Mm, crazy. Okay, I'm not a dancer, so don't expect anything fancy. Okay? So here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna walk the weight on my heels. We talked about a second ago about the wall posture, right? Heels, hips, shoulders, and head. I want to now walk with the weight on my heels, so I'm staying back here the whole time, head up, instead of down here. Questions? If I can walk, if someone just walked this way, good, all the exercises I just talked about, and just do this, it would have a stronger back. Okay, so I'm going to walk here, starting this way, head up, weight on my heels, heel to toe. Okay? So just like this. Okay? And again, everyone's different. I'm going to walk this way, heel to toe, so my body's upright the whole time, even leaning, like a, my head, leaning back more to get my back stronger. If I lean back more, the weight's more on my heels, on my glutes, on my hamstrings, it has to fire so it don't fall all the way backwards. So now to reflex to balance yourself out, right? Okay? If I go backwards, it's going to actually tighten my body up and my lower back, keep my core, maintain this position, so as I move, I bring my cerebellum, my, my coordination and balance of my brain, and I reset even faster with movement. So when we're walking, we walk back, we're a little uncomfortable, a little slower if need be, until our body gets there and then maintains it over time. 
Will it feel weird and comfortable and a little sore? Yes. If not, then we gotta go back further. So if you're if you're naturally here, then we're not gonna go all the way back here the first day. I'm gonna go where you're comfortable, where you're comfortable now. I'm gonna come back where you're comfortable and go, okay, let's start there. A couple days. Feels good? Let's slowly come back. You're gonna know when your body's ready. I'm gonna have to watch you all day long, that'd be weird. Alright? Questions? Anything? Is that you starting your routine? You have a good now one, two, three, five, six stretches and exercises to start a long standing sitting posture. Build your routine up. When do you want to stretch? When do you want to stretch? I like mornings, that's my thing. Get it out of the way. Once you start getting busy, everyone gets up, you're like, okay, now my day's done. You know? We well, can we get things done first and then we we'll go to bed too one more time so we sleep better. You get out of bed better. So tomorrow's gonna be better. Not so we think about tomorrow, not just today. And take a look and use your walker too. Good height. All right. Anything else? That's my spiel. That's what hey, I do. Hey. Yes. Hey, hey, Miss Jessica. Yes. No, she's D. I'm. Oh, go. No. You're, you're D. She's D. Yeah. D. D. Jessica. D. 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 Flower girl. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, yeah. 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 Yes, D. That, that is a good exercise for shin splints. Good. Shin splints. Okay. I like this one. Shin splints is going to be here. If I take my foot here. And do a little bit of this here, and now bring my bring my bottom of my foot up to my facing me, allows me to stretch my shins. So hold that up here. The ugh, feel good. They're tight. So hold it up there. And I, I always just push my foot, the bottom of my foot toward me, so I see my bottom of my shoe. Just hold that where it's uncomfortable. At least 30 seconds. That's the face, eh? One second. <laughs> That's the face. But again, you were uncomfortable, hold that for about 15, 20 seconds, go back and forth on both sides. Anything else? For men, that's pretty easy. For women, tired, but men usually sit this way. Yeah. It just takes time. But not. But people don't know what to do. That's why I help them reset because they come in, because not because they're doing the right thing, they did something wrong, so that hurts. How do I fix what made it hurt, the source of the problem, and then have the maintain their routine at home so I have to see them? I'm too busy as it is. What, make, what makes this shin split happen? Tibialis anterior muscle gets tight. That's the muscle that goes on the outside between the knee and the ankle. Tibialis anterior is that side muscle. It tightens why, up on you. Why does it get tight? That's one of those magical questions. How much we, how much we sometimes don't stretch it because we don't know how to stretch it. And if it gets tight because we're moving moving more than we're used to, it causes tightness. Sometimes it can be a foot issue, sometimes it can be a shoe issue too. Kind of play with it and see. But usually it's making it stretch first and it still feels a problem, then check your shoe, check your feet. And even a tight calf causes that happen too. If I have a tight calf, make it happen over here. So these are antagonistic, antagonistic muscles. If one's tight, other ones weak, or vice versa. So you want to check both the calf and your, your shin. Sounds good, right? So I don't know. Anything else? You guys have a good lunch. I'm going to get a salad and get the heck out of here. And again, this will be on YouTube afterwards. Uh, I'll have it out by this afternoon. So if you want to go to my YouTube channel, well, boom, again, allows you to go there. Uh, you can go chiropractic, go to our playlist called Workshops, or you'll see as the first video, today's video, if you post today. All right, guys, we'll see you next month. Next month talk is going to be... To how to stretch and look taller. Oh, oh, I need that. <laughs> so how do we fix the upper back? You guys are good. Thank you for coming. Next month, every month.